We want to read from the book of Luke, chapter 16, verse 1 to 13. Luke 16. The Bible says, Jesus told his disciples, there was a rich man whose manager was accused of wasting his possessions. So he called him, this, the, 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 the owner called them, the manager, and called him and said, and, and asked him, what is this I hear about you? Give an account of your management because you cannot be a manager any longer. The manager said to himself, what shall I do now? My master is taking away my job. I'm not strong enough to dig. I'm not ashamed to beg. I know what I'll, I'll do so that when I leave my job, when I lose my job here, people will welcome me into their houses. So he called in each of his master's debtors. Mind that word. Because for him not to be a faithful steward, he gave out his bosses, things, or properties in debts. He asked the first, how much do you owe my master? He doesn't, he doesn't have, even have the records. How much do you owe my master? Let's continue. 900 gallons of oil, olive oil, he replied. The manager told him, take your bill. Sit down quickly and make it 450. Are we together? How much do you owe the, the owner? And now it is half. Corruption ni kuanza sai. It is hapo kitambo. Let's continue. Media. I tell you, I tell you, use worldly wealth to gain friends. I will go back to verse 8. Verse number 8. Then the steward said within himself, what shall I do? For my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship. I cannot dig to beg. I am. This man was full of pride. So you see, he cannot dig and he cannot because he'd be ashamed. But he can steal. You see. I'm resolved what to do then. That when I put, when I'm put out of the stewardship, they may receive me in their houses. So he called every one of the Lord's debtors unto him and said unto the first, how much do you owe your Lord? And he said, a hundred measures of oil. And he said unto him, take thy bill and sit down quickly and write 50. The first one was, now this one, another half. Then said one hit to another. And how much do you owe? He said, a hundred measures of wheat. And he said, take thy bill and write four score. Four score is 80. Are we together up to there? And the Lord commended the unjust steward. No, Jesus Christ commended the unjust steward because he, da, he did it wisely. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. And we are the generation of light. And I said unto you, make to yourself friends of the mammoth of unrighteousness, that when you fail, you may receive, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. If therefore you have, been, you have not been faithful in the righteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, Who will give you that which is yours or your own? No servant can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other. Or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He, 
you shall serve. You cannot serve God and mammon. Or you cannot serve God and money. Now, what is stewardship? You said this morning, our theme is stewardship. Or our topic is stewardship. What is stewardship? Stewardship is a careful and responsible management of something entrusted to one's care. And this morning, I want to speak to the stewards. Because the Lord has an expectation. And the best explanation I can give is of our caretaker. Most of us, we know, we have been or we are in houses that are managed by, age, by caretakers. And the work of a caretaker is to wake up in the morning, clean the whole plot. Because for one thing, he's not paid. He is, he's given a free house. Because, because of that free house, he's able to wash the staircase, no matter from, far, from ground floor to the fifth floor, because he does not do what? Parent. Number two, he doesn't even pay electricity. He doesn't even pay water, because he's a steward. And for you to be a steward, friends, you must be faithful. That's qualification number one. You must be faithful. Stewardship is faithfully using God's resources to do God's work. We must stop thinking like the owners and think like a manager. You are on, it's only that you are putting it very well, a manager, but you are a caretaker. Taking care of things that are belong to you. Properties. Somebody invested in so much in that plot. He bought the plot, he built the flat, and he brought you just as a caretaker or a manager. But you thought you can be the owner. God forbid. You will never be the owner. Even if you be a caretaker for that plot for over 100 years, or the many years you are going to live as a caretaker, you never be the owner. You remain to be a caretaker. In verse number 9, the Bible says, he used the resources available to him to secure friends for his future. And this is what made Jesus compare us, the children of the right, and the children of the, of the darkness, of the, of, the, of the world. Because this man was very wise. He knew, because I am going to lose my job. And from here, where will I go? This shows this, this man had not invested. He only used to eat and lend. But the day came, and the owner said, I want you to give me the accounts. And this man knew, I gave so and so. I gave so and so. And, they have not, and I, I want to believe that it was not a one month debt. It's for many months. Because you could remember that this person, I gave him 900. And he knew, for me to have a face, because I'm leaving this place, I must pray, pay, pay rent, I must eat, I must clothe myself, and I must have money. He said, I must be wise. So what he did, instead of taking the accounts and giving the accounts to the owner, he sat down and went through his mobile phone. I hope, so. I hope there were more phones that time. And called James. How much do you owe? And James was, James was very practical. He said, I owe him. I owe you. You know he's the owner. I owe you 900. He said, make it 450. This 450 that is remaining, it's what, what's going to sustain this man because he's losing his job. And Jesus said, these people are very wise. What about us, the children of the kingdom? The Lord has given us everything, but we cannot be faithful stewards because you want to eat and keep stock. But I'm just saying this morning, I've made you a steward. Do I have faith in you? Can you give me the accounts? What have you to be doing with what I entrusted in you? Vanessa was severe. Jesus said that the sons of light are often not as wise as the sons of this age. These are the people that are not born again. Can we be compared with people that are not born again? Because you are not good stewards. My prayer for us this morning is that we can be faithful stewards. There's nobody who can make you a caretaker having in mind that you are a thief. But remember this. Nobody is written here that you are, a, you are a thief. It is because of your unfaithfulness. The Bible says you give, you pay your tithes. But you know what we do? You pay half. And you say, I paid half. Let me, if you don't pay the whole tithe in the house of the Lord, you are a thief. 
you better put, keep the other half because half tithe, you have not paid your tithe. And you want to claim the blessings of tithers. There are no blessings of thieves. This man knew very well that he's doing contrary to what he was employed for. And he's saying, I cannot dig. And how to, to, begin to believe he was a man. I cannot dig. I cannot beg. Because of pride, I'll be ashamed. What about us? The children of the light, we need to be wise. One as if you were. Jesus says, if you use your money wisely, you will make friends for yourself. If you use your money wisely, you make friends for yourself. Who will receive you in heaven? And I come to believe that is that when you arrive in heaven, there will be a welcoming committee there. Who are there because you invested your money in gospel enterprises. I want to believe, to, to, to agree with what our brother Sadika has prayed this morning, that you are losing a lot of young people through immature death. These people, some of them have, have died because they were not good stewards of their life. They were not good stewards of their money. Because you must be a good steward of your life because nobody can take care of your life and be a good steward of your money. But these people have died because they engage themselves in dubious, dubious acts and the process they, they were killed. Some of them are pastor's children. It's very unfortunate because nobody, nobody, nobody can get born again on your behalf. It is you and you alone. So I believe when you invest in the kingdom, and what he was saying, he said here that he has, been, he has, so many, he has seen so many groups return, rest in, rest in peace. And in our church, we have seen so many links that so and so lost a brother, a mother, a father. But you, because you are so mean, oh, we are so mean, let me include myself there. You only say, this one does not concern me, and let it pass. We are now here, we are going for evangelism. But you say, me, I'm born again. Where am I going? I'm already born again. I'm ready just to come. We go to heaven. We are not here. We are going to hospital. You are not there. It doesn't concern you. But this man knew. I need to have friends who are going to welcome him when I go to heaven. Or when I lose my job. I'm saying to her because I know those who have invested in this kingdom, those who have invested in, in these departments, believe you me, there will be people waiting for you in heaven to welcome you. That I am in heaven because you invested your money and came to see me in hospital. I didn't leave the hospital. I went to the hospital and I passed on to glory in hospital. And here I am because of your shilling, because you came to see me. I am here because when you enter for evangelism, you reach out to me. And that's why I'm in heaven today. I am here because when the church announced that you have a mission here and there, you gave. You didn't come, but you gave. Your shilling made the, 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 the missioners to reach me where I was. I am here to welcome you to heaven. Who will welcome you in heaven? Who will welcome you in heaven? Using your money to purchase friends for eternity. Because I tell you, friends, nothing that you give to the kingdom goes to loss. Go, 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 goes to to, to waste. Because whatever you do in the kingdom, Jehovah God has a record. Using your money to advance the gospel. People are going to preach. Last week we had gone to Nakuru for a conference. And Bishop Mark said this, that next year, Deliverance Church will be 55 years old. And he's trusting God for one million souls. And for this one million souls to come to the kingdom, we need money. And people gave. For those who are with me, there are people who gave instant 100,000 for the gospel. Can you imagine how many people will welcome those who gave such amount of money? Who will welcome you when you go to heaven? Utakuwa mgeni wanani? Using your money for heavenly purposes. When we say we want to give, you don't have. But other things, you are number one. 
But matters concerning the kingdom, your name is never there. Are you a good steward? The Lord has given you everything. Name it. Money. Good health. Like now we are sitting here. People are in hospital and they are paying for oxygen. Are you expecting a bill in the evening? But you cannot give to the kingdom. Who will welcome you on the other side? It's very unfortunate. When you land at the airport, people are there. We are coming to welcome their, their, family, their, their friends. And there's no... Unangalia hivi, wetu na sanduku yako. Nobody came to welcome you. But the Bible is asking this morning, are you investing in the kingdom? Are you a good steward? That those who that have come to the kingdom because of you, they've been heaven, ready to welcome you. What a joy it will be. Laying up your treasure in heaven, that is what Jesus is talking about. And he goes on to say, it's not a matter of how much you have. It's a matter of your heart attitude. And the Bible talks about the, 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 the widow who gave, Dr. Ron talked about it last Sunday, the widow who gave two coins and the rich man who brought money. And what I was getting is that this lady, she, when she came to the, at the altar, she came and dropped the two penny. But the rich people threw because there were a lot. It is your heart attitude. It's not the how much, but your heart attitude. Don't give because you have been coerced to give. Give because you know it is more blessed to give than to receive. Are you a good steward? If you have not been faithful in the use of that, which is another, that flat that you are a caretaker, it's a flat in the, in the spiritual, not the physical one. The flat, the flat in the spiritual. That sixth floor, you are not faithful. What can you be trusted with? You live in that flat and you cannot even wash it. But remember, you are the caretaker. The Lord is saying this morning, I need your services. I employed you as a steward but you are failing me every day. When the owner comes to that flood, and you are there, you don't pay rent, you don't pay power, you don't pay water. And even on top of that, you have a watchman that your life is secure, but you are not a faithful steward. Some of us, our blessings are come, but because of the, the way we handle other people's possessions, the, your blessings come and take around and go back. Because the Lord is saying, I want to see your faithfulness. Are you faithful? Everything you have is God's. Don't tell me that you are working. It is your salary. I'm saying everything you have is God's. And you are not faithful in how you use God's money, which is given to you as a steward. To show up in the fact that you will not be given a full reward that is written your name in eternity. That is a reward for you, friends, because you are a faithful steward. For each of us, our stewardship will one day come to an end. Like this man, the caretaker, the owner said, Give me the accounts because your work has come to an end. Many of us here, you have lost jobs. Unakuja, in the morning, ambio, hiyo kiti kona mwenyewe. Here is your letter. Even those who are in school, let me tell you this morning that even that job will come to an end. And you go, one year, I've worked in three companies. I've worked in a group of companies. I've worked in a group of companies because this year, I think this is my fourth company. That is not an investment and an achievement because you are not a good steward. People have worked in a one company for 15 years because they are good stewards. So even now where you are now, it will come to an end. Allow me to prepare you. But purpose to be a good steward. This man knew that 
that my work has come to an end. There was no notice. Notice ni kuambiwa, give me the accounts. But for you be told, I'll give you, I give you three months in notice. Hata wanyo wanaishi kwa nyumba nambia kwa the. London has said, three, after two months, I want to increase my rent. So you either increase the rent or you do what? You talk it. The preacher's voice, even my voice, the mental faculties and even strength will not last forever. Everything that you have will not last forever. The wealth of this world may not last even in this life. I said everything, even the wealth will not last forever. A mother's stewardship over her children changes and diminishes greatly. There's nothing good like a mother's love. There's nothing good like a mother's stewardship. But even that will come to an end. The Lord says, it's a matter of who you serve, who you love, and who is your master. When you're serving God, whom do you love? Whom do you serve? You can't take money with you to heaven. Either it true or more. It is going to stay here. But you can invest in it in such a way as to reap the, the reward of that investment forever in the friends that will come you in eternity. Friends, the people that have gone before us, those are the ones who are going to welcome us. But they will welcome you if you invested in their lives, not everybody. You have gone to the airport. If you have not gone, you will go. Some are born as fewer. Will go. When you go to the airport and your host is coming to receive you, they come with a placard. That's not their name, it is my name because they are my host. I know that is my host. Will you find a placard at the airport of heaven to receive you? Now, we talk about how much you can take. You can take your time. Allow me to bring some biblical wisdom on stewardship. Number one, we are managers of God's material resources. We are not the owner. We are managers. And a manager is employed and sacked. That is the beauty of a manager. You are employed and sacked. The employer represents God. And the manager represents Christians. Just as the man, just, just as the man he managed to be, he, he managed belong to his employer. Their caretaker, whatever he managed, does not belong to him. It belongs to the employer. So the money and material resources under our control are not ours. You say it is me, I've worked for it. Yes, it is you who worked for it. But let me tell you this, friends, that we live in in a society that you, you even begin with the God. God, you understand. This month I cannot be able to pay my tithe. Because I have three loans. When you took the loan, did you know that loan number four was the tithe? But because God cannot come and demand from you, But let me tell you this. The disciples of Jesus told Jesus, Teach us how to pray. And it gave them a model of prayer. When you pray, say this, our Father what in heaven. That is not all that prayer entails. That's just a model. And us in our tithe, 10% just a model. You're supposed to pay more than 10%. But you say, I earn this. My, sir, my tithe is 5,000. 150. You even look for the 50 shillings. Kwa sabu nafanya kazi kama rula. My tithe is 5,150. Because you live under the law. My prayer is that you wake up. Be a good steward and live under the grace. That you can say, I want to pay my tithe 13 times. Me, I pay my tithe 40. I don't pay 10%. I pay 14%. Because I have seen God, a God of more than 10%. But you say, Apana, ni five shillings and 50 cents. Nowadays, I don't know where you get the 50 cents. But you must put to the latter. 
50 cents. I pay 5,150 because that is the 10%. And God is so faithful. You know what he's going to do? He'll bless you according to the 10%. Because our God is just. You cannot even give somebody a plate of food in your house because I do budget for me and family. And God is so faithful. He'll only give you that which is able to sustain you and your family for that one day. Then after that one day, then you go to shopping. Because you showed him you cannot afford an extra plate for somebody else. I tell you this morning, upon this altar, you will not miss, but do not have the extras. What makes our life easy and simple is the extras. The Bible says in the book of Matthew, that two people bought a plot. Two people went to the architecture and they built the two people built houses. But one of them went to the extra. He dug until he met where the rock was. When weeds came, that house stood. But the one did go for the extra. The house fell. Look at the ten virgins. They all had oil. But the five virgins had the extra. What will make you stand? This days that you are living now, leave alone the finance bill that is coming, the party I made. What will make you stand? It is the extra. Be a good steward. Buana sifiwe. Buana sifiwe. We are God's managers entrusted with some of his resources and responsible to use them to advance his purposes. Are you a good steward? That God can entrust you with his resources. Amba unakula, unakula na kuiba. Kama unesa kula tithe. Nini wezi kwa kula? If you can steal God, whom can't you steal? Bana sifiwe. It is required for one to be faithful. Are you faithful? Can you be called a faithful steward? When you look at the Bible, the, topic, the, the title of the, of the scripture says, a shrewd manager or a shrewd servant. And that is what we are learning from. from a shrewd person can teach us a lesson. Where are we? The children of the light. Bible says in 1 Corinthians 4 verse 7. 1 Corinthians 4 verse number 7. For who makes you different from anyone else? What do you have that you did not receive? And if you did, not re and if you did receive it, why do you boast? as though you did not. Did you receive anything? Have you received anything? If there is a difference between us, it is because of what God has done in us. For there is no reason for pride. We are all given. Even the bread that you have this morning, we were given, or we are given this morning. Everything we have had come from God. For there is no reason for pride. These three questions should prompt other questions in our heart. Do I truly love God? Do I truly give God the credit for my salvation? You may say you don't have anything else, but number one, do you give credit to God because of your salvation, if you are born again? Do I love the spirit of humble gratitude, or do I, sorry, uh, do I have, do I love, yes, do I love with the spirit of humble gratitude, seeing that I have received from God what I give to him. We are very quick to receive. Everybody needs to, uh, desire to, gi to give, to receive, but not to give. And I saw this story of somebody who was drowning, and this person, somebody came and found him drowning, and told him, give me your hand, I lift you up from the waters. He said no. He said again, give me your hand, you're drowning. And a voice told him, tell that man, take my hand. And he's going to give you his hand. He said, take my hand. And gave him the hand, the attitude. You don't want to give. You want to do what? To receive and to take. This morning, do you have to take us in the house? Do you have to take us in the house? They are not here. Who are you? A giver. Number two, our management opportunity will end soon. 
our management. Yes, we are all managers. But it will come to end soon. The manager was getting fired for mismanagement. The employer evidently gave him days to update his records. Not to be in the job, but to, uh, because his job has come to an end. He knew that he had only a short time to manage his employer's money. And then he would be in a whole new situation. But it reminds us that the duration of our earthly lives is very limited. We are here for some time. We were told when we were in Akuru that we are living in this world as if we have come to our end. Nitulifika. Unajenga, unanunua, unauza. But you are on a journey. This is not our destination. You are on a journey. Number three. We can, own, we can enjoy heaven more by being generous now. That is verse number nine. Using money now with an eye to eternity. Using money now with an eye of eternity. Entry into heaven is a gift only paid by Jesus' death for our sins and received only by faith apart from in our work. I come again. Entry into heaven is a gift only paid by the blood of Jesus for our sins and received only by faith apart from in our work. You can go around once in this life to use your money. You, sorry, you only go around you only go around once in this life. So use your money and stuff to make all the eternal friends you can. Jesus called money and righteous mammon because riches promise much but perform nothing. In number four, Jesus said, if you give to the poor, you will have treasure in heaven. If you give to the poor. You don't go out to look for the poor. We have poor among us. There are people here who cannot be able to afford a meal. And you are yet you are here. Unamuambia, omba tu mungu atakusikia. Aombe ya kule maombi. We unaombe unakula, unalala. So you support your needs, support your family. There are those among us you are working and your siblings are not, are, are not in school because you said, my money is my money. I'm not a parent. But remember this, that you are steward. Support your nation. There are so many charitable organizations in this nation. They are looking unto us. Those that are genuine. Support your nation. You enjoy dishonorable, sensible comforts with a worshiping heart. You purchase what's spiritually beneficial and what works to enable you to advance and demonstrate Christian love. We shall be known because of love, loving one another, because of our love to one another. That makes all the difference. Show hospitality to serve and minister to others in need. And that is specifically a way that we lay treasures in heaven. I wish that we could open our eyes and we see what we invested in heaven. Maybe some of us, we only have an account. So if we account na equity, na kuna kitu umeweka, but you are an account holder. You can fungu account na absa. In your account, you jina yako peke yake. What is in your account in heaven? What is in it? Is there anything in your account? Because you don't go. When you go for evangelism, you are very busy. When you go to hospital, you are, you can, mimi, sina neema ya spitali, siku talala uko tapata neema. Dr. Nata I want to admit you. Do you have the grace? I admit you. But you don't have the grace. You cannot go an extra mile. Unauleza tunenda mission. Kuna gari. Jesus had no vehicle. Kini sunataka nini? Gari. Nata na matatu. Matatu. I wish you could see the value of a soul. Those are the souls that will come us when you go to heaven. Who will 
will welcome you. Who will welcome you? Utakuwa mgeni wa nani? Utakaa hivi vile kwa kuna neighbor, utakaa kwa nani? Cuz you don't share rooms in heaven. Utalala kwa nani? Principles of giving as I wind up. If you want to be a faithful giver, these are the foundations. Transfer ownership of your money. Itoke kwako iende kwa nani? That is what I mean by transfer. Transfer ownership of your money, your possessions, your time, and your talent, and your earning power to God. Anything that you have, transfer it to God. Tell him, I want to be a faithful steward. I want to be a faithful to the Lord Jesus. I want to be a faithful caretaker. I transfer everything that I have to you. Make stewardship the purpose of your life to exalt Christ and proclaim the gospel. Salvation, friends, is free, but gospel is very expensive. Salvation is, but gospel is very expensive. After you have transferred ownership of everything, and that is a hard decision. I was telling somebody this week that the Lord deals with our heart, not our mind. It is you to change your mind, not your heart. When you change your mind, he comes and changes your heart. Therefore, for you to transfer everything that you have, it is a decision of the heart, not of the mind. Put yourself in a position to use that money now to honor God and to accomplish that purpose. That's why we are, we are living in this dispensation that we can preach the gospel. We were told in Akuru that it is us who are writing Acts chapter 29. But how can we write it? If we are so comfortable, so comfortable giving out whatever is in your hands in debts, like that shrewd manager. He's sitting there and giving up in debts. And when he's called to bring the accounts, he tells somebody, write, write 450. Right, 500. Because the other half, he'll come for it because he'll be jobless. That is not our portion. Faithfulness is all, always rewarded beyond our wildest dreams. Faithfulness. May the Lord maintain us in faithfulness. Even though that faithfulness may sometimes involve us in appearance of utter failure, the Lord make us good stewards. The Lord is teaching us through this shrewd manager, we children of the light, that we are supposed to be faithful. Allow me to bring this illustration and then I call it a wrap. There was a, 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 a father, a father who had two sons. And he said, I want to see the faithfulness level of my sons. Just as the Lord is telling us this morning, he wants to see the faithfulness, the stewardship level of us as children of the light. And he called the two of his sons and gave them beans. Beans in a maragwe. Mnajua maragwe. He gave them beans. And he told them, I want you to go and plant these beans. And in a span of three weeks, I want, to, I want you to bring me back the seed that you planted when it has already germinated. And these two sons went. After two weeks, one of them germinated. The, one, the other one didn't. So before he called the son, let me bring you on speed. He had boiled the beans. Are we together? He had boiled the beans. And you know a boiled bean cannot do what? Not germinate. But because this young man wanted to prove his father wrong, he went and looked for other beans and came and planted. So after three weeks they were called. Bring me the beans. This young man brought the beans in a tin. It already germinated. And the other one, it, it hadn't. And the father asked them, what happened? The, the one that did not germinate said, me, I planted mine. And for three weeks, it is still where I planted it. And the father said, well done, good and faithful servant. The other one said, you are not faithful. These beans cannot germinate because I had boiled them because I wanted to prove the level of your faithfulness. This morning, friends, where are you? 
you went ahead and looked for other beings because you want to prove yourself a faithful servant. You want to prove yourself a good steward. But the Lord is saying, this morning, I want you to be a faithful steward with what I have given you. The Lord did not boil the beans, but he gave you resources. And he said, I have a caretaker. Are you a faithful caretaker? Are you faithful this morning? Is it in your timing? This service begins at 8. At 8 is when you are leaving your house. 8 is when you are going to look for bread. Because you must take breakfast. 8 is when you are putting your makeup. Are you faithful? Are you a good steward in time? Look at your body. Bible says the book of Leviticus that you are not put a tattoo in your body. Young people, who told you that to be at par is to put your body a tattoo? A young man, I shared this during when we went to the encounter. A young man was looking for a job for many years. In one time, an opportunity came up for him. And went through the interview. Just before, it was outside the, outside, the, outside the country. Just before he went for the job, they were told to come now for the final touches. He came with a t-shirt and had a tattoo. The man just said, you don't qualify for that job because of that mark. You are not everybody. Yes, every young person has a tattoo. You are not every young person. You have a name. That is the name that will be called by. That is the name the Lord will call you by. Are you a lesser man because you don't have a tattoo? You are saying this morning. Are you a good steward? Steward of that body because that is the temple of the living God. Don't take it everywhere and anywhere. You know the Holy Spirit. It's supposed to be just one place at a particular time. He's saying this morning, are you a good steward? Steward of my time. At 8 o'clock, the time that this service is supposed to begin, the Lord sends an angel. Go to Shiloh, place of breakthrough. Count for me. Those who are there by 8, I'll bless them. The angel comes and count. They are 20. Takes back the number. Those are the ones that are blessed. The rest, you just come to fill this place. Are you a good steward? Only two hours. This service is only two hours. But those two hours, you are still stealing, like the shield manager. You still keep them a hold. I must open my shop at least for two minutes. And then I go, and then let me know. Those two minutes becomes half an hour because he's bringing customers so that he can steal the time that belongs to the Lord. Are you a good steward? What is the difference between you and the shrewd caretaker? What's the difference between you and the shrewd manager that you stole so that you have people where you go when the job is finished? But the Lord is saying, invest in, in, the, in, in, in heavenly kingdom so that when you come with somebody and some people to meet you. Let's stand on our feet. First and foremost, before you become a steward, you must be a son in the kingdom or a daughter. Are you here? You're not born again. That is the beginning point. The Lord is after your soul. When you give him your soul, he makes you a steward. Number two, when you look at your life, take a short account of your life, you say, for real, I've not been a faithful steward. I've been like, that, that should manager, I stole. But I want to invest in the kingdom so that I'll have people to welcome me when my job on this earth is over. If that is your prayer, go before the Lord and tell him to make you a faithful steward. To make you to work the work of a stewardship, the one that he gave you 
faithfully because that is the requirement. Father, we thank you and bless you. We worship you this morning. You are such a good father. You are such a faithful father. Yes, dear Lord, you are stored for our self, Jehovah Father, possession that now belong to us. This morning, we want to surrender them to you, Jehovah. We want to lay them down. Then you come up, Father, and have your place in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, and oh, help us to invest in the kingdom. So the people will welcome us, Jehovah Father, because of our investment in the kingdom, in the name of Jesus Christ. We want to thank you because you are faithful and you are true. We want to honor you because you know you are adapted to no one. Remember mercy upon us this morning. Remember mercy, King and glory. Remember mercy, Abba Father, and make us to be faithful. Faithful Jehovah Father. So that when you look at us, dear Lord, you say, Welcome, good and faithful servant. We love you this morning and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.